Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm working on a 2021 Ford Focus Active. I'm going to be fitting a front dash cam into this vehicle and I'm going to give you a couple of tips on popping a rear one in as well because I'm doing a rear on this so I'll give you a couple of quick guidelines. With that I'll start at the rear first. So here we have the rear boot lid as you can see I've already run it but I will show you what I've done. This panel on these just pops off you can always put your fingers behind it look pull the whole panel comes away very very easily and all we've done i'll just move it up quickly there's your cable from the dash cam it goes down here and through this boot and then down through a hole into the headlining of the vehicle along the edge behind the plastic and along the top of the doors until you get to the front dash cam popping it behind any airbags on route now this is the bit that people normally ask me about and you'll notice that there's grips on it on lots of these different models on each corner and all you've basically got to do is get a plastic leverage tool not a screwdriver and push quite firmly here and then sort of hold it away with one hand you'll feel the the actual spring piece of plastic pop on it so move it down a little bit and then do the same with this one push really hard and then sort of wiggle it and it will come out now if it's not going to come out with reasonable force you know don't lever it you'll snap the plastic lugs off and it won't sit back in properly so just a case of push hard like so so in other words you're going to pop it out like this so there's one plastic lug look and there's another one on the side here once you've got them both out you can normally just sort of pull it carefully like i say to break it there you go and out it comes intact so then what you do basically I normally spray something inside it to make it flexible yeah and such as well WD-40 etc and then you can normally tape your cable to some sort of short rod and shove it nice and gently through so it comes out the other end normally work from this side so go basically from under there there's your cable push it through and then with your tape to a rod shove it through there and then up when you put these back in it's just a case of snap and they're on okay let's move on next up we're going to get our front power cable from the fitting kit so you'll have purchased a fitting kit for your camera and it should have whatever connections needed for the front of your camera this particular one's a mini usb and you should end up terminating in an earth cable which will connect to a chassis earth show you which one shortly and a power cable which will connect to a fuse spur now there's two or three different fuse spur sizes a fuse spur is something that doubles up the socket of one of the fuses in your fuse box so it can run the original circuit and a fly off to run your camera or other device normally a two or three amp fuse is adequate to run a camera and what we're going to do with this is basically unwrap it and prepare it to go along the top of the window screen first things first you're going to pop off your a triller panel now all i normally do with this is just pop my fingers behind it here and it goes click and comes off behind it is an airbag can't really get an angle to show it yet but we're going to put the cable behind the airbag so you have to put your finger right behind the airbag like i'm doing here and pop it out so it comes out the other side here your power cable here's the rear cable from the rear camera that i was on about earlier and again, we're going to pop that behind the airbag and up and along the top of the window screen. Just a quick tip before I go too far here. So here's the power connector from the front camera that i just shown you. And there's the connector to the rear camera. I've got both cables running through this ferrite filter or ferrite filter, should I say. Basically, these are on a hinge. There you go, you've got little clips there. Look, you open. It's on a hinge and it opens out. And all you do, you wrap your front cable through the middle of it, round the back of it and then back through the middle of it. I've also popped the rear cable through it as well, just to keep it nice and tidy and to help with interference. Rear dash cams are notoriously bad for completely destroying the signal on DAB radios. In fact, a lot of cars you have to do without a rear dash cam because you will lose all DAB radio signal. That goes for pretty much any brand and any little gizmo you can put on to stop the interference. So be warned, check with your, you know, manufacturer of the vehicle where your DAB antenna is if it's on the rear window of the vehicle it's highly possible you're going to get no dab signal after you've fitted a rear camera so check that one first guys refer back to your retailer but anyway there's your cable we're now going to hide everything but the last 
well, two or three inches really, up above the headline. And we're going to tuck it up out the way and make it all nice and tidy. There we go, it's just tucked up. You can use your fingers just to flex the headlining to get it up there. And then we're going to go down the A pillar. The fuse box on this vehicle is behind the plastic panel just there. And the plastic panel, you basically pull your mat forward and pop it off. It's this lock, it's on clips. You just pull it off out of the way to get to it. And we're also going to remove this end panel as well using our plastic leverage tool because there's an ideal earthing spot behind this. Your earthing spot being one of these two 13mm bolts. We're going to take them out, put a ring terminal on the end of the black earth wire and pop it behind the bolt. Completely withdraw the bolt, normally pop a washer and like I say a ring terminal on the back of it. And there's the finished article with the earth cable, there we go. So there's a washer, then the ring terminal, then the bolt. You don't have to do it like that but I've done it like this for years and it's a very secure way of doing things. So we're then going to basically tidy the cable up behind this end panel, run the red power cable down and underneath across to the fuse box. Right, for this next part, guys, you're either going to need a multimeter or one of them little test probe screwdrivers where you touch something and it lights up if it's live. Now, depending on where the car's sold in the world, what spec it is, etc., etc., your fuse box layouts can differ, so do not directly copy this. You will have to run this test yourself to be sure. On this particular one, normally, and I will be checking, this 10 amp just here we can see that red 10 amp is a switched ignition live so what we're going to do is test it now with the ignition off so if i put my probe on that like so touch it on the end zero voltage with the ignition off we'll turn the ignition on and see that go to 12. With the ignition off, we can now go ahead and remove that fuse, like so. This is your fuse spur, so like I was saying, it doubles up one socket into two. The top fuse runs the original socket, and the next one down runs your camera or other device. And as a fly-off to go to your power cable. These push in where the original fuse was, if you're tight on space, you'll need a flat version of this. This is an angled one. You can get them where the, the pins come straight out. So just pay attention to that. We're going to go and plug this into where we pulled our fuse from and then connect it to our power wire for our camera. Quick update, guys. It's a very tight space on this particular vehicle where we're putting the fuse. So I've actually used this type of fuse spur. So if I go up show you there you go you got an inline fuse holder as well there just to double double fuse the item that's two or three amp in there and we run along into our power cable for the camera now this type of fuse spurs and the other type that i showed you are available from ebay amazon that type of place or contact your quick test before we put all the plastic trim panels back on again ignition on blue light is on and hey presto Turn it back off again. Now we can put all our trim panels back on again and reassemble the side of the car. With everything tucked in neatly out of the way, we can go ahead and hook our trim panel back in, which is quite tricky to do one-handed, so I will do this uh, off camera. But basically it hooks in under the rubber seal and then clicks short. Once your panel's clicked in on the front edge here, you've just got to go up and basically pop all your rubber seal over it so it sits nicely like it was originally and that's it guys that's how you put a dash cam in a 2021 focus active hopefully this was helpful like i say any questions refer to your retailer and for the few spurs of all sorts look on ebay amazon that type of place thanks for watching bye for now